walking close to thee. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. Amen. I'm going to read a ver couple of verses from John, the 21st chapter, verses 15 through 19. It says, So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Ten my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him in the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Most assuredly, I say to you, when you were younger, you girded yourself and walked where you wish. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will gird you and carry you where you do not wish. This he spoke signifying by what death he would glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said to him, follow me. Amen. I'm going to use as a topic today, he will do it. You know, through all the things that we do in this life, there will come a time when we ha will have to give an account. Jesus asks these questions. Who do you say that I am? Do you understand what I have done? Do you love me? Amen? One thing we have to always remember, that God forgave Peter because Peter denied him how many times? But he forgave him. But look what Peter came and did. Huh? He preached a sermon and saved about 3,000. So now if God will do that for him, denying him three times, amen? Why won't do it for me or you? You know, when we think we got it bad, we just don't know. You know, when people commit suicide, they gave up. Not knowing that God answers prayer and he's a forgiving God. But you have to find that out sometimes the hard way. Amen? But you have to realize for yourself that God loves you and he's willing and he's above all able to do all and exceedingly above anything that we could think or understand. We have to take it upon ourselves, though, to do the right thing. And that's so simple. God said, just repent. Come to me like a humble child and tell me all your troubles, and I'll give you rest. Don't we want to rest, people? We are tired. We fight this battle on a day-to-day -day basis knowing that we have help but we always trying to help God instead of letting God help us. Why do we think God need our help? We can't even help ourselves. But the truth of the matter, hey, you have to be realistic. We always want to try to do things ourselves and mess it up. Then what do we say then? Oh, my God. But why you didn't go to God first? Because he was there all the time. And he's begging you every day, just come to me. Humble yourself. You know, we got that pride, and we just let it get in the way. You know, because we know we can do all this. All right? Until something happened. Then you say, I should have listened to so-and-so. No, why didn't you do that before you made the mistake? It don't hurt to be humble sometimes. It don't hurt to seek advice. And you know, when elderly people say, well, I'm going to give you this word of advice, they don't know what they're talking about. Well, let me tell you one thing for sure. 
experience speaks volumes because they might have not been down that road. Or they might have not seen that same thing a time or two. But you're going to believe that you're the only one it ever happened to. And that ain't true. But sometimes you have to find out which way. Hmm. They say if you make that bed hard. Oh, but people listen. God has given us a way out right now. If he forgave Peter way back then, he'll forgive us today. The same thing applies for Peter, applies for us today. Humble yourself. Give God the glory. Seek him. Get on your knees. Shed some blood that way. Praying. Seeking guidance. And find out. See, then God going to scare you. Because he's going to start giving you so much you ain't going to know what to do with it. You're going to say, oh, God. And look what I've been missing all this time. But see, sometimes you have to go through trials and tribulations. So you have a testimony. So you can tell somebody where you came from and what God did when you've been on the bottom. So you know better than anybody else what he can do. And that's your job then, to testify, to tell somebody that God loves you and that there's nothing that he can't or won't do if you humble yourself Seek his face, and above all, pray. Pray without ceasing, because this is what God wants. You know, the Israelites were in the desert for how long? Forty years? And it was so simple. But God done brought them up out of Egypt, done fed them every day. Are they grumbling? Moses go up there to talk to the Lord and pray, and when he come back, they grumbling. Done set themselves up a little calf. Got a big party going. Is God mad again? You see, they don't get enough. You know, some people you can't, I don't care what you do, it ain't good enough for them. Are these the hard-headed people in the world? But what we got to do is pray for them too. Because if we don't tell them, then they'll have an excuse. But if we tell them and they don't listen, we have done our job, but you can't give up on them, and you can't judge them. That's above all, because we all got faults. You know, so when you think you got it all together, you better pray some more, because sure as you live and breathe and you in this flesh, you're going to have some sin. If it ain't no more than something that you think, you're going to realize that God is not through with you yet. Amen? So all we have to do is trust and obey. We must maintain that kind of thinking that God loves you. But now God said he's a jealous God. You can't put everything before him and expect him to be happy. You know, he's not saying that you should neglect any of the things that you like and do, but give him his first. Because he put us here. He kept us in our right mind. And being with God is the best place you could ever be anyway because he'll open your eyes, your imagination, and things like this that we can't even begin to fathom because we haven't got that close with him yet. You know, he wants us to have a thing called a relationship with him where you and him are partners in this love game that he has where he's going to love you and he's going to love you until you can't take it, and then you won't have to pour it out on as many people as you meet because you ain't going to be able to hold it all because that's the way God works. You know, he's going to give you enough of what you need to make sure that every day that you live, you got something to give somebody. The days when it be real hard, when some of our best friends come to see us more than one time a week, praise God, and that's when you see that, that favor of God coming on us. You say, well, Jesus, that's why I love you so much, because there are going to be days like this. Amen? But we understand. But then that's the time when, you know, this test come that you become stronger and you grow each time. So these are the kinds of things that we want to do, and we understand that there are going to be challenges because the world is full of obstacles. And see, the devil wouldn't be um, doing his job if he didn't try to tear you down at every opportunity. 
because that's his job is to steal, kill, and destroy. And don't think that any one of us are in a position to get a pass. If he don't do nothing but make you sick, or he hit somebody in your family, he gonna hit you where it hurt. Or he gonna bring something in your vision that you know you like. You know, he tempts you like that. And if you ain't strong, praise Jesus, you'll be gone. But what we're gonna do is continue to trust in the Lord and find a way to believe that with every ounce of our being, that if we continually trust in him and find ways to love on him like he has loved on us, that we can't go wrong. Because every day is gonna be a challenge of some sort in your life. You know, when we lay down tomorrow, tonight, we don't know what's gonna face us tomorrow if we're even woken up in the morning. Just like we lay down, you know, we think it's such a, we take it for granted. How many people you heard of, they laid down and they didn't even get back up? And that could be me and you, you don't have to be sick. People die in their sleep every day, just, just be their time. So that's mercy and grace that God has given us because he what? He love us. But he's giving you the opportunity to tell someone else that Jesus loves you because he did what? He spared my life. You can see, you can do for yourself. You know how many hospitals are full of people that can't even move? Amen? Yeah. But now these are the things we had, can't take for granted because just like it's happened to one of them, it could easily happen to one of us. So what we need to do is focus on Jesus, understand that regardless of what happened in life, he's the answer, the truth and the way. We're going to always find ourselves not knowing which way to turn because sometimes it's going to come at you like a tornado. But remember one thing. When he was out there on that water and Peter turned his back to the wind, what did he do? Peace be still. And everything was calm. Just like God can create a volcano and a hurricane, he can cease one. But you have to put yourself in the position to know him like that. To know that when times get rough, like when your father or your mother die, or your child get hit by a car, or these kinds of things happen. Your, your family takes sick. Somebody you love and are close to. And you can't understand why, because they ain't never done a bad thing in their life. But this is the way the devil works. But God will give you the strength to bear these kinds of things so that you can understand that he wants you to get to know him a little better. That's when you rely on him as your source for strength and courage. Because they say Jesus is the way, the only way that you can get some, through some of these things. We know we all going to have a day when we think we just done made it. But that same day when you let your guard down will be the day the devil come at you more than you can imagine. What we're going to tell you today is stay on your knees. Do all that you can to encourage the young people because they're taking them away like flies. Our elderly people need our patience and understanding because that's the wisdom. You know, if we could pair every elderly person with a young child, you know, like they go into daycares and stuff, imagine they would give them something to do and it would be good for the children because they could learn a thing or two. You understand what I'm saying? Because they want to feel useful. They still got life in them. You know what I mean? Give them something to do so that they can see that they're appreciated. You know, them high rises are full of people that just want to do something. You know, they just need somebody to get them in some kind of direction so that they can get away from the muck of mire, the TV every day, you know, the game show. None of that ain't producing nobody in the kingdom. We need some kingdom builders. Amen? Somebody that's going to go into schools, 
and in the daycares or where elderly or young and tell them that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. We can't do it all by ourselves, but we have to have help. But it starts with one. If you tell me and I tell somebody else, then we all can make a chain reaction because God loves us all. But he wants all of us to team up together to make a difference in this world. Amen? Are you willing to try Jesus today? We've been through everything else. You done tried the clubs. You done tried dancing. You done tried drinking. But now, how about trying Jesus? See what Jesus will do and, and scare you. Now, you talk about scared to death. When you see that miracle start coming your way and the healings, then you're going to hear a story about a group traveling in the mountains. Bus had a flat tire. As he turned out, the place they called, when the reception was gone, none was there. Praise God, they were on their way to get a blessing. But you never know. But just when you think all is lost, God will send you a ram in the bush. Amen? But you got to be in his favor. Not that it couldn't happen to anybody else, but he'll give you that assurance that you can trust and depend on who? Him. Because man will fail you. They don't mean to, but they're in the flesh. We need to be in the spirit, praying on a daily basis, trusting God as no other, because God let us know that there are times when we can't help ourselves. But he'll help us. But you have to have sense enough to go to him and in spirit and in truth and ask for help. Because he can't help you if you ain't willing to accept it. And when he do send a message down, if you ain't available, you ain't going to hear it. So start, let's talk to God. See if he don't make a difference in our life. Is there anybody that wants to try Jesus today? Is there anyone here that wants to make a difference in the world? To change their life? To try to help somebody to find Jesus? To just come to the realization that I'm not all together there, but I know that if I humble myself and seek him on a daily basis, he'll strengthen me where I'm weak and lead me in the right directions. All of us need to be led in the right direction. All of us need help. We all have challenges. They won't come or go today or tomorrow. But what we do know that is if we trust God, that he'll carry us through. And that's all we need to know, that Jesus is the way. Amen? Amen. Amen. Is there anyone here that would like to commit their lives to Christ today, knowing that Jesus will make a way out of no way for you, if only you would believe, if you would only repent and give God your hand, and your heart will be changed, and you're going to have a lot of trouble because the devil's going to really come after you then when you decide that you're going to go with Jesus. But God said that if you just continually to be faithful, he will give you the desires of your heart. Is that what we want today? The desires of your heart? Let's all stand. Jesus keep.